Hey, this is Horner. We're going to look at uh, the rotation on dynamics. Free response question number one. You have a bicycle computer and it is attached to a sensor and then you've got a magnet here and every time this uh, wheel turns that magnet goes by the sensor and records uh, the amount of time it takes for that to go. Uh, in the computer we've also said how far the uh, radius is here too. So anyway, um, with that, we can go through and take a look at some data. And here we see that they have plotted the potential, so that's voltage, so potential and voltage versus time. So every time this goes by, it creates a little bit of voltage which spikes. And you'll notice that as time goes, these are getting closer and closer together. Because they're getting closer and closer together, your time is shorter between each time, so we know that the wheel's got to be accelerating. Uh, they give the radius of the wheel and they want us to calculate some things and they want us to use words to explain how we are finding the values. So all I did here was I just showed the equations. I never used words. You, on the other hand, need to absolutely positively use words. So make sure you do this. Use words. Um, the, they want you to know the approximate values for bicycles instantaneous speed one at T3 and the other one at T9. So to find the to speed at this point, we're going to find the difference here in time between the two peaks. Um, so the difference between the two peaks is approximately about uh, 0.8 seconds. And I did that by saying each one of these graduations here is 0.2. So I'm going to go 0.2, 0.4, 0.6, uh, and that's about 0.8. This one over here for 9, the difference between these two is about 0.2. Um, so I'm going to do 2 pi r over 0.8, and that's equal to 2.1 meters per second. And that would be at 3 seconds. That is the instantaneous velocity. And then the instantaneous velocity at 9 seconds, same equation, uh, same radius, but now our time is a lot shorter. And so this one is 8.5 meters per second. You'll notice the key uh, that is posted, the printed key, is not right. So that's why you want to watch the videos. Uh, the bicycle's constant acceleration as the bicycle travels down the incline is just the difference in the velocities divided by the difference in the times. Uh, one of the equations you need to memorize for the AP Physics 1 test. So 6.4 divided by 6 will give you 1.07 meters per second squared. So those are the first three points for this one. For letter B, they say that, uh, suppose the, both bicycle wheels have rotational inertia that can't be ignored, but they're connected to the bicycle frame by bearings, they're completely frictionless, and the wheels don't slip. Does this mean there's no friction force acting on the bike? Uh, yeah, you have to have friction, and it has to be static friction between the road, so I'm going to make that road, and the tire. So this is mu s. So we know our friction is static friction between the road and the tire. That static friction creates a, creates a torque between the road and the tire. So here we've got friction, and that friction then creates a force that is acting on the tire itself at this radius. So the friction force is acting in this direction. It is pointing, well, I guess we can do it either way. Uh, it is pointing in this direction, 90 degrees to the line of action. Uh, for letter C, if you have the new bicycle, it's traveling the same incline from rest as a frame that is the same size and shape, but the wheels have the same mass but a smaller radius, so that's super important. Uh, will the peaks be closer together or further apart? They should be closer together. They are closer together because the smaller wheels have less rotational inertia and it's easier to get them to go. The smaller wheels also need more rotations in order to travel that same distance. So more rotations means that you have closer peaks. Um, and that is the end of the first question.